when you talk about politics in New Hampshire, you got to check in with former Governor John Sununu, and he's on the line with us now. Good morning, Governor. Good morning. How are you today? Well, I want to start off, before we get into a detailed chalk talk about uh, New Hampshire politics, uh, there is a little matter uh, that occurred, popped up this morning. I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, Donald Trump was on Good Morning America a short time ago, and he sort of came after you. Are, are you. Have you heard this? No, but but go ahead. All right, well, here it is. I'm going to play it out for you. You look at a guy like Sununu, he's, you, when you talk about losers, he's a main loser. He got fired by Bush like a dog, and this guy goes out, and I guess he's working for somebody that he wants very much because I heard about that, and I think it's a ridiculous attack. There you go. He's coming after you. Says that. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's because I pointed out what a loser Trump is. I pointed out that he had Trump Airlines that went bankrupt, Trump Mortgage that went bankrupt, Trump Vodka that disappeared, Trump Steaks that disappeared, Trump Magazine that went bankrupt, uh, his four major casino bankruptcies he lost in Iowa. So he he's a born loser. And yet he's trying to convey to people that everything he touches turns to gold. And so uh, that's a pretty harsh assessment. So you feel yeah, very strongly that this is not... It's a statement of facts. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I'm not... Well, I mean, I, I, he's now calling you a loser, so well, do you, do you have okay. a response? That's okay. That's okay. He, he obviously has a very thin skin, uh, does not like people to know his string of, of bankruptcies, uh, does not like people to know that that uh, he's had major ventures like Trump Airline that went bankrupt and the Trump Mortgage that went bankrupt and Trump University that's out of business and got uh, uh, really criticized by the authorities for for being a scam. So uh, when when I point out those facts, I guess it gets under his skin. Well, I'm well, sorry, I, he's so thin-skinned. I, I got to ask you this, though, given that what you just said there, who are you backing in? Uh, in New I'm Hampshire? not backing anyone. That's the whole point. Uh, I have made no endorsement. I am just trying to make sure that the process moves forward and Republicans get a nominee that can beat Hillary Clinton. So, Governor, you understand New Hampshire politics. You know the people of that state. Why the phenomenon? Why is Trump leading by double digits in the polls in New Hampshire? Well, you know, he was leading in Iowa and, and ended up losing. But not by double digits. Well, at one point he was. And and so um, I think the folks in New Hampshire now are doing what they do all the time in the last week. Uh, they're assessing where they are. Uh, I would guess that 40 or 50 percent of the folks here are either undecided or, or fluid enough to change their vote at the last moment. And I think what they're trying to do is, is digest what happened in Iowa and try and, recog- and, and recognizing the strategic importance of a New Hampshire vote. I, I think some of them may even vote for their second or third choice if they think it's the right vote to get the right kind, a, a strong nominee that can beat Hillary. And how about with the independents and the Democrats being able to vote on the Republican side? The what impact do you think? Mercedes, just the independents. Well, the independents. Oh. How will that? That's that's good to know. How will that you think impact the race? Uh, you know, it, it's a it's a very big number. Uh, as of now, uh, roughly forty percent of the state is not registered as a Republican or a Democrat, so it's a significant number. They really have to end up making two choices. They have to decide whether they want to vote in the Republican primary or the Democratic primary, and then they have to pick a candidate. And I think uh, uh, it will have a significant impact. I think to some extent uh, Trump's numbers are based on the fact that the pollsters have gone out of their way to cast their polling net deeply into the independent pool as well as the Republican pool. And and we'll see uh, how that impacts uh, the difference between the polling numbers and and the and the results next Tuesday. Governor Sununu, you you are on record saying that you hope you're not endorsing anyone, but you hope. I think you put it more of the rational candidates win. Is that what you yeah, call the them? Traditional the traditional candidates. Look, yeah. this country has problems, and and you need somebody as commander in chief that has the experience of dealing in in this tough arena. And you said, and, what, where Rubio, Christie, uh, uh, Bush, or Kasich were your four, right? right? three governors and Rubio, yeah. I think, are people with experience. Look, everyone points to uh, Rubio as a one-term senator, but he was Speaker of the House in, in Florida. Jeb Bush was a, a very conservative, successful governor in Florida. Christie's a successful governor in so, New Jersey, and Kasich has done a very good job in Ohio. Can I ask you something about that? Uh, you're, listen, you worked for President George Herbert Walker Bush, of course, as his chief of staff. 
Uh, you just wrote a book about President Bush, actually, uh, The Quiet Man. But uh, given Jeb Bush's performance, the money that's been spent, the the effort that's been spent, all of the endorsements he has, he could he barely was a blip on the radar in Iowa. If he finishes, uh, you know, less than fifth place in New Hampshire, is it time for him to go? Well, that's a decision he has to make, and it's a decision all the candidates have to review after New Hampshire. I think, I think uh, anybody who's decently funded. Uh, has a strategy of at least going through Iowa and New Hampshire, and and maybe even South Carolina. But certainly after South Carolina, any of those uh, significant candidates, if you will, uh, have to make a real assessment as to whether or not they want to go on into the March 1st, where there, I think there's 12 primaries on, on March 1st. So somewhere between South Carolina, which I think is the 20th of February, and 10 days later, or, or nine days later, uh, the March 1st uh, uh, primary. I think, right. I think any of those candidates that does not have something that they can brag about coming out of those three states has got to do a lot of serious soul-searching and All right. decide whether they can go. I, I'm just back from Iowa, and I noted that there were a lot of people that waited until the very last minute to make their decision. That is right. characteristic of Iowa voters. How are New Hampshire voters in that regard? Oh, traditionally, they, they always wait until after Iowa, uh, which is usually an eight-day gap, and this year even more so. And, and as I pointed out earlier, it's a, it, they are not – traditionally, they look at candidates in terms of differences in positions. This year, it seems like style has a little bit more impact on it. And, and I think, uh, as I walked around yesterday and talked to folks after the Iowa caucuses, a lot of the folks here were trying to, to meld in, if you will, a strategic component, thinking that, that, that we've got to have a real uh, serious candidate going against Hillary, and they right. were trying to, some of them were even talking about casting a ballot for their second or third choice, if that was the right way to get a strong candidate for the party. All right, we've got to leave it right there. Uh, thank you so much, Governor Sanu. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you.